Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi, my name's Rob from RobNonPhoto.com and today we're going to be having a quick look at the um, Aperture Amaran Halo um, HLC AHL-HC100 LED ring flash which the guys and girls at Aperture were very kind enough uh, to send me to have a play around with. Now, first of all, what is it? Well, this is a LED ring flash which means that it's... Um, Primary, primarily designed to work with uh, macro photography. This is the little beast here. And what you've got on here is you've got 100 LED lights. And then you've got a little um, power pack and control pack, if you like, which goes onto your camera. You can connect by the, by the hot shoe. And then it also comes with lots and lots of um, lens filter ring adapters that enable you to mount the ring flash onto your particular camera and for the purposes of this video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at uh, fitting it on my Canon 350D but it, the same goes for any uh, Canon Nikon um, camera you want to go with. Um, I've used the uh, the halo ring uh, light uh, several times now and I have been incredibly impressed with uh, the brightness of the LEDs how easy it is to use um, and the finished results because one of the problems is when you when you're working macro when you're trying to do pictures of products or flowers is kind of my passion really when it comes to macro photography the, the diff difficult thing is that it's often the lack of light um, and so you've got a couple of choices really you, you can put a flash on your on your camera um, which is okay, which means you can handheld, so you can move around, you can take lots of different angles nice and quickly, but you can end up with some very harsh shadows going in the wrong places. Or you can set your camera up on a tripod, um, which means that you can use available light, or you can use things like torches, um, and do a little bit of light painting, and you can get some very nice results indeed, but it's slow, it's tedious, you've got to move the tripod, or you've got to move the cameras around, and it's not very good. But the idea with one of these on your camera, what I found is that you can take very good macro uh, shots going handheld, um, and, uh, and be very pleased with the results indeed. And what you'll see at the end of the video is we'll go into Picasso, and I'll show you some of the kind of final edits of, the, of some flower photos, and some... I guess you could call them almost product photos that I've taken as well. But first up, let's have a closer look at the unit. So, that's the uh, ring flash. Ring, I keep calling it a flash. It's kind of a cross between a flash and an LED uh, light. In fact, it does have LEDs in it, and they're the things that, that um, power it. Now let's turn it on so you can probably see. I'll just angle it so it doesn't completely overwhelm the screen. But as you can see, on the back here, we've got a dimmer as I spin round I can adjust the inten intensity of the light like so and then what we can also do is we can all just also just have like half of the ring flash on or the whole of the ring flash on as you can see like that so that could vary the intensity or vary where the shadow was falling on, on your particular subject very useful indeed um, and then what you do is you can mount this on top of your camera. Now, so far, so good. This is very similar to lots of other ring flashes you may have even had to go with already, or um, um, maybe uh, you've seen on the internet and stuff. But what kind of makes the, uh, the, the, the Halo subtly different is that not only can you have constant mode, which is also great for video and obviously uh, still photography, but you can also put it into flash mode. Now, in flash mode, this, the little mounting, as you can see on the bottom here, not only is, just, is a holder for, for the control and battery unit to go on top of the camera, but it also can be triggered by the camera as well. And I can just test this by just pressing this button. And so when you press the, the shutter release, the shutter button on your camera, bang, the, the light goes off. Now, it's not incredibly bright, but it's approximately twice as bright as when you've got it on uh, constant. So when you've got it on constant like that, when you flash it, you, can, you might you can, might be able to kind of pick that up on the video, but it's it's roughly twice as bright. So if you're in trickier lighting conditions, or you say you're further away from your subjects, the ability to have um, 
uh, that, that extra power of the flash comes in very helpful indeed. And as you'll see, when I fix it onto the camera in a moment, also, when you half press the shutter to, to get your focus lock, um, a modeling light comes on, so the LEDs come on dimly, so you can actually, so you can actually see what you're doing. Um, now it's not as bright as a as a, a normal flash or a ring, you know, a ring flash. But as we know, they can cost hundreds and hundreds of pounds or, or hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Um, where this is a really nice lightweight alternative. So what we'll do now is let's actually physically put it onto the camera. I've got my 350D here. Now I've got the 18 to 55 lens on. So normally, you know, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't use that for macro work. What I would do is I would take the 18 to 55 out. And then I would get my 55 to 250. Obviously, if you've got a dedicated macro lens, then happy days, you would you would use that. Let's just take this lens hood off. And then if you look at the end of your, your lens, it will give you the, the filter thread size. So in this case, it's a 58 millimeter. So I, I get my uh, filter thread adapters. Just find the 58 millimeter one, 55, 52, 67. There's the 58. We've also got 77 a 49 and a 72 so you know there's plenty of choices for loads of different types of lenses and then all we do is we just take our adapter and then screw that on the end there see that goes on nicely I'll just put this onto the camera temporarily so just so you can see how it goes so let's snap the lens on let's put the control unit on the top of the camera like so and then it's got the little wheel just like you would have on a normal flash and then what we can then do is we can take our unit and you kind of squeeze in the corners like so and that locks the unit now I've only got cheaper lenses and as you'll probably know cheaper lenses they spin don't they when they focus like <laughs> like that but this is quite a loose fit so it doesn't really matter if you've got more expensive lenses that don't spin while they're focused then, then happy days but but there isn't really a problem with that now the range of this particular ring light is from about five centimeters or, or as close as you can get with your lens up to about a meter and a half um, which is quite a long way and does mean that you could use this particular gadget for a little bit of portrait work as well and I haven't really done much of that because um, uh, Oliver hasn't been playing long, but basically, you know, my what I like to do with this sort of thing is is macro, and that's what you'll see. But no, you could use it that. Now it's not got, it's not going to be anywhere near as bright as a dedicated ring flash or an adapter, but it's something you know you could have a go with, have an experiment with that. But again, your subject would have to be pretty close. We're sort of talking sort of a meter away, meter and a half, something like that. So. So if you're doing normal macro, with a 55 to 250, for example, what you do is you extend the lens all the way, and then you would focus in, and um, I'm in the constant light mode here, and then I could, in fact, let's just turn it off, so that, you know, I could, I could muck around with that. Um, the way I tend to do it is I shoot in aperture priority mode, and as I get closer or further away from my subject, obviously the, the light that the... Um, LEDs are throwing on the subject changes and because I'm in aperture priority mode the camera will then compensate by changing um, the, the shutter speed up and down and then I can choose my depth of field with my aperture nice and easy and then you know if I wanted to change things around you know if it's not if the shutter speed isn't fast enough I could brighten it up if I get to a situation where even with the ring light on full power as you can see there it still wasn't quite powerful enough what I would then do is I would then go over to manual mode put the uh, ring light into flash mode and what you can probably see there if I half focus see the modeling light come on so that's good so I can actually see what I'm doing and then what happens then is when you actually press the um, the shutter you probably saw it sort of far away there now when you're in manual mode what you'd probably do is you'd set shut you <laughs> Excuse me. You'd set your shutter speed to two hundredth of a second. Use typical with the Canon because that's the fastest sync speed that this will uh, will cope with. And then you would set your aperture to I don't know whatever you wanted for your depth of field. And then you would adjust um, your aperture and your ISO to get your get your correct exposure. So as you can see, we're kind of uh, firing that that way. See if you can see it going off like that. Now. If you find that there still isn't quite enough light when you're in manual mode, maybe because you're too far away, um, 
or you need to be far away to get the particular framing that you want to do. Here's, a, here's one a little tip that I found that really helps. Although in the manual they recommend you use 200 per second as your um, the sync speed, when this actually goes off and, and fires, it a normal flash will will uh, will, will kind of fire a, I don't know a ten thousandth of a second. It's it's a real fraction of a second that it goes off, and you so so fast indeed that um you know it's 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 almost difficult to see it. Um, however, this flash when it goes off, when these LEDs turn themselves on and off, they're a lot slower. So what I found is if you slow down your shutter speed to say a hundredth of a second or something like that, although you'll start to be start letting um, some of the ambient light in the room light your exposure. You'll also get the that extended time of the the ring light, so it actually increases the power of the ring light, and that's something you can't do with an ordinary flash because they go off for a ten thousandth of a second, and that's it. So as you can see, nice and easy to use. But for most of the time, I would be shooting in aperture priority mode, and I would be shooting in the constant light mode like that. And, and doing it that way. Now, you may well be saying, well, wait a minute, Rob. Um, you're using the 55 to 250 lens there, and then when you're on the macro mode, the minimum focusing distance for this particular lens is about 1.1 meters. And you say, well, wait, that's quite a long way away. If we say, the, you know, the maximum range really of this particular light is about 1.5 meters, aren't really on the edge of what you can do? And the answer to that is yes. But when I'm doing my macro photography, I don't just use my standard lens like that. What I'm also using is these babies. And I've shown you these before on some of the videos. These are extension tubes. And what these enable you to be able to do is to focus a lot closer with your with your normal lens. And they're very, very simple to use these. Um, these particular ones are manual extension tubes. Uh, I'm definitely going to try out some automatic ones because the problem with manual ones, what they do is you lose all electrical contact between the lens and the camera. So you, you, you go over to manual focus um, and you lose aperture control completely with uh, Canons or any camera where there's no aperture in. Um, and so you're just controlling things with your ISO, with your shutter speed and your distance, if you like, away from your subject. Um, and obviously you can vary the, the brightness of the, of the light. So let me, let me just kind of show you that because the photos that you'll see of the flowers near the end of the video, they're all done using extension uh, tube. So all I do is I just... I take my 50, in fact, let's turn this off. That's better. So I take my 55 to 250 off, like so. I take my extension tubes. Now, I'm not going to use the whole. You, 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 with extension tubes, you just use bits of them. So I'm just going to use the, uh, the, the body mount side. And obviously, I'll need the lens mount side, which is that one. And I could just use those two together if I liked, but that wouldn't give me that much magnification. I think I'll use that bit there. Then all you do is you screw these together. The longer they are, the more magnification you get, but also you lose more light, and you also make your depth of field incredibly small. Um, that's why Although extension tubes are, are nice to play around with, they they can be tricky to get used to because your depth of field is so small. So my my extension tube is ready to go on, but I'm going to show you another another Rob trick as well. The problem, obviously, with electronic lenses is that as soon as I take this lens off and I put this dumb extension tube in that's got no electronics on it in between, I can't change the aperture. And whenever a camera, whenever a lens is on a camera, um, its default, if you like, when it's set at, is wide open, um, because that's what makes it bright for you to see through the viewfinder. And then when you take a picture, it tightens up the aperture, and then then you take the photograph. But I might not want to be shooting at wide open. Say uh, with this particular lens, you know, when it's like that, it's at f5.6, and then when it's like that, it's f4. I think I might want to be shooting f5.6. So what you can do with Canons is you put the camera into aperture priority mode and you set your aperture to say, I don't know, f5.6. And then, you know, on, on this old 350D, you'd look on there or you can look in, the, in there or if you've got a more expensive camera, you know, you have the display there. Just check this on there. And then what you do is this, you, you press your depth of field preview button, which is on this camera is there. And you might even be able to hear, in fact, I'll put it in the mic. 
you might be able to hear. And what happens then is when I've got my finger on that button, the aperture tightens up and goes smaller. And then what you do at the same time is you press the shutter release and you turn it. And that um, aperture will now be set at, uh, instead of wide open at f4, it's f5.6. Now, I can't change it, but it means that I've got a little bit of extra depth of field when I come to take my pictures. Because as we all know, you know, a... Um, a larger F number means a smaller hole, which means larger depth of field. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my extension tube on, like so. I'm going to put my lens back on, like so. Now also remember, not only have I lost, um, go to aperture priority, not only have I lost autofocus, I've also lost <coughs> control of the aperture, but I've also lost image stabilization as well. So this is just a, a dumb tube of glass now. And the way that I tend to focus when I'm working like this, you actually focus with the zoom and you go in and out. And what is very important when you're doing this is because you've lost so much light because of use of the extension tubes, keep an eye on that shutter speed. You know, by all means, whenever you've taken a photo, make sure you chimp and check the results and zoom in just to make sure your shutter speed isn't too long so that you're getting camera shake or even subject subject shake in your photos. And if it does start coming to that, put it all on a tripod, you know, and take some nice photos that way. And the final little hint as well, if you're taking photos of flowers and they're in a jar or in a vase, put the vase in the middle of a round table, set up your tripod at one side, and instead of moving your tripod and your camera around all the time, move the flowers. It's a lot, lot simpler than that as well. So there we go. We've kind of been through... Lots of the features of the uh, Aperture Amaran uh, AHL HC100 Halo 100 LED um, ring light, uh, ring flash. Um, again, fabulous for macro photography. Um, remember, it's an LED light rather than rather than a proper flash. So the light output is quite low, but it's more than enough for doing a great macro photography, as you'll see in a minute. I've been very impressed with it. It's um, The colours especially are very, very good and very, very true. It doesn't have any funny colour casts or anything like that. Um, and um, thanks for the guys and girls at Aperture for sending it to me. So if you want to look one up, if you fancy buying one, it's A-P-U-T-U-R-E. And then it's the Amaran, A-M-A-R-A-N, Halo. And then the actual model number is the AHL HC100. And it comes uh, comes in a box, just like that. Right, so let's turn this off now. And let's dive on over to Picasa and see if I can't show you some photographs that I've already taken. Here we go. And right, so we're into Halo, into uh, Picasso. So let's have a look at these pictures. Get them nice and big. Here we are. So this is the first shot, um, done very very close, and it really gives you an idea. I mean, this flower head that you see, this this the, the darker green bit was probably I don't know a centimeter centimeter across, but with the extension tube, it's giving me this really good magnification and you get these beautiful depth of field where it's very very tiny basically this bit of the photograph on the edges is, is in focus the center isn't and then the rest is not only blown out of focus but it's also blown out of exposure well very very pretty and in fact that picture on um, Flickr went into explore uh, I only uploaded it a few days ago and it's already got well over a thousand views that way Similar sort of thing, uh, less of a matte abstract shot, more of a uh, traditional type shot. But we've gone in close. I've focused on the yellow centre bit of the flower, and here really is a great example of the quality of light you get from a ring light, an LED light such as the uh, Amaran Halo. Everything's nice and even. There isn't any nasty shadows around. Everything, you know, it just pops. Um, I have post-processed these photos a little bit. Um, obviously, this is a black and white, but again, it gives you a good example of. It's almost an otherworldly quality you get when you're using a ring light because we don't often see the world in this way where everything's nice and evenly lit from every single angle because normally the light source that we're using to look at a scene from is always coming from a different uh, point of view. Nice black and white. Uh, this is a close-up of a rose. Nice uh, square crop. I always quite like using square crops. And as you can see, the depth of field is tiny. You know, It's really just these edges of the the rows here that are in focus and the center is out of focus and the outside is out of focus as well. And this is, I think this is some sort of cabbage roach, fantastic looking flower actually. Bought these for Suzanne for Christmas. 
And uh, again, what I've tried to do, I try to focus right on the center of the flower, and then the rest of it falls out of focus, apart from the, um, the, the bits that are in the same plane, and the ring light has given everything this kind of ethereal glow. And then we've got a pink rose as well. Now these are product shots, kind of. I use <laughs> these are sort of test shots of our Christmas dining table that I took with the LED uh, light. And you can see the type of beautiful, even light that you get from the subject. I could have spent a little bit more time laying out the, um, the table to make it a little bit more symmetrical, but Suzanne and Mel had just finished it, so I jumped on a chair and, and took some shots. And as you can see, it produces really nice, um, evenly lit images that you know really jump off the screen and uh, and really pop. And the final photo is really one that shows you um, that when you're zoomed all the way in or out, when you're at the sort of shortest focal length of your zoom, you can actually see the edges of the ring light as it goes around. So you, you tend you would tend to not shoot like this. You know, you would zoom in a little bit, and then the, the ring light that you can see around the edge would then disappear. But I thought I'd include that just as a bit of fun, just so you can see um, how it goes uh, that way. Okay, so there we go. Um, let's go back to me. That's it, really. Uh, I hope oops, this little review of the Aperture Halo LED uh, ring light has... Uh, informed you on how useful this type of light can be. Um, it's very lightweight, they're very cheap compared to proper ring flash units, incredibly useful and you can make some very pretty photos indeed. Well my name's Rob from robnumphoto.com. Remember you can email me scalespeeder at gmail.com and uh, all it may say is um, well happy new year if you're watching this in the wraps of new year and um, thanks for watching. <laughs>